bring in Chris Haynes, been a busy guy covering the NBA Finals for Bleacher Report and a TNT Sideline Reporter. If I didn't watch the game last night, Chris, how would you describe it? You know what, DP? Actually, I was a little bit surprised by the turnout of the fan base of the Miami Heat. They're not known to be some of the most passionate on-time fans. And so I, I was interested in seeing how they were going to show up. And they actually showed up for the first quarter. They were there in their seats <laughs> for, uh, for the for the for tip. So they were they were punctual. Uh, it, it didn't, you know, it, it didn't help. Wait, much. that doesn't <laughs> sound like the Sacramento Kings of the early 2000s when it comes to a home court advantage. Hey, how was the crowd last night? You know, they were punctual. Yeah, they were punctual. <laughs> and DP, one thing, one thing, DP, that I discovered in attending a Miami Heat game, they have an actual club in the arena. Like, there's an actual club where I'm talking about VIP tables, DJ, the whole club atmosphere. They have it in the arena. And I remember I ventured over there one time, and it was a bunch of NBA players who had their VIP booths, had their crew, their people with them, <laughs> getting bottle service. So I'm like, this is why fans don't show up really for games. This this is why they're here clubbing. It's, it's, it's unlike any other place. That's part of the heat culture, right? That's, that's, <laughs> I keep I keep being told I'm force fed heat culture. I don't know what the culture was last night, other than how about somebody stop the Joker and Jamal Murray? We shouldn't be surprised with what we're seeing. I was a little more surprised with Jamal Murray. It felt yeah. like he knew he knew he needed to step up a little bit more, and he certainly did. But I'm curious about Jimmy Butler. We haven't had that. You know, Jimmy Buckets here. It hadn't been a great performance so far in the NBA Finals. There's something going on that we don't know about? I don't think so, DP. I think, you know, and I'm getting credit to you about Jamal Murray and feeling like he had to step up, you know, going into that game three. That was a talk in the locker room. And when I was talking to guys, they were telling me Jamal Murray is like kind of salivating off of the opportunity to go out there and play well, not just play well because the NBA Finals, but because Jimmy Butler has switched on to him now. And so game two, everybody felt like maybe Jimmy was going to neutralize Jamal, and that simply wasn't the case. He was still able to get his shot off cleanly and with rhythm. But now you talk about Jimmy Butler. Yeah, he hasn't had those big breakout games that we've seen him have in previous rounds. I, I don't know if it's defensively what the Nuggets are doing. They're switching everything. You know, Jimmy is getting the switches that he wants. You know, Aaron Gordon will start off on him. Then he'll get that screen to get Jamal Murray on him. And then he's getting the shots. And, you know, a lot of teams talk about the Denver Nuggets like they don't have rim protection. And so you would think that it would be a little bit more easier to get to the basket, but that just hasn't been the case. I mean, Denver Nuggets are a really good defensive and sound team, and that's why they're comfortable switching from one, uh, one to four. Uh, Jimmy just hasn't been able to get off. I haven't heard any intel as far as if he's, you know, dealing with anything, but he's getting his shots there. He's getting his shots off. They're just not falling with the consistency that we've seen in the previous rounds. I know I'm getting ahead of myself and I shouldn't do this, but if Joker wins the title, let's say he's finals MVP. Now all of a sudden we're going to start with the conversation about him compared to other great centers. So it he goes into a new category. He's going to go into a category maybe with Akeem and David Robinson and Patrick Ewing where, you know, he's not Shaq, but, but you know, two MVPs winning a championship and he's having one of the greatest finals postseason performances in history. Do you think it'll be fair if, if they win that all of a sudden now we start a different conversation with him? No, for sure. I definitely think he's, he's worthy of that. I mean, two MVPs already. I mean, the guy is unstoppable. There's nobody that can stop him. You know, he he doesn't get rattled. You're not going to speed him up because I, I don't think he can be speeded up. <laughs> <laughs> so, but he, he's just unstoppable. I mean, and just the awkward shots that he takes. And when he takes it, you know, guys feel like, yeah, I forced him into a bad shot. But no, like his shots are just ugly. He's comfortable taking that. That's one thing Anthony Davis told me in, in last round. You know, a lot of shots he would shoot with the – clock expiring and he just get it off in back of his head and they feel like that's a good shot no I mean feel like that's a bad shot well it's a good shot for him and so no I, I definitely think he's worthy to be in that category of some of the big uh the best big men we've seen in this league and you know footwork you know I don't think he gets enough 
credit for the footwork. His footwork is probably on par with Hakeem Olajuwon. And yeah. I, I think Hakeem Olajuwon had the best footwork um, as a big man that we've ever seen. Joker is right there. And then just what he can just get his shot off without using much athleticism. And, you know, he's one of the most talented guys we've seen in this league. So no doubt, I think he's deservingly so should be in that category if if he is to win a championship. Chris Haynes, TNT sideline reporter, Bleacher Report, NBA insider. Yesterday you had uh, a report on Chris Paul's future. Now, has he been released or is he potentially going to be released? Because I wasn't quite sure exactly what, what the headline was. Yeah, so... Chris Paulin's represent, representation were, were contacted yesterday, and I received word that um, they were informed that the Suns intend to waive him before his salary is guaranteed. Now, the Suns want to uh, put out that basically there are still options, there are still other things that they're considering. Uh, a trade is a possibility if they can trade him before that June 28th deadline, but Chris Paul and his representation were under the impression um, after that phone call that um, he was being waived, which would make him one of the top free agents this summer. And, um, you know, that's something he he's looking forward to. I can tell you he's looking forward to seeing what's next in store for him. I was told he plans to play for several more years, believes he can still do this at a high level. And I think the, the stats will still dictate that. And, uh, you know, he just wants to um, – get this situation resolved and get it finalized so we can try to figure out the next steps. All right. I know going back to Los Angeles, more likely that the Clippers would welcome him or the Lakers would welcome him if you were choosing between those two. If you're choosing between those two, obviously it's still pretty early right now. Um, We haven't got to that stage yet, but just if I'm just looking at the rosters, I think, the Clippers are going to really consider re-signing Russell Westbrook. So it probably okay. wouldn't make much sense over there. Um, the Lakers, you know, they, they, they acquired D'Angelo Russell in the um, mid season that didn't work out really well. So it's unknown what they're going to do with him. But I think if you, if you're, if you're uh, minimizing it just to those two teams, it probably make more sense with the Lakers. I know that uh, you've reported on Damian Lillard and what could happen. They have the number three pick in the draft. And, you know, this is Portland at a crossroads. Are you going to go young and invest in the younger players? You got two weeks to decide this. Is Dame Lillard traded before NBA draft night? You know, I speak with Dame pretty frequently. Um about basketball, about life in general, but you know, we 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 talk about. He would agree that this is kind of like a, a crossroads situation right here. The Portland Trailblazers have the number three pick. Damian Lillard wants to win. He wants to win now. He wants to compete for a, t- a title. I don't think he believes that um, taking that pick and keeping it is going to do them any service in the now. So I think. You know what the Portland Trailblazers decide to do with that pick will dictate. Well, let's Damian say they Lillard. take Scoot Henderson. If you're Dame Lillard, do you want to stay? If I'm if I'm Dame Lillard, based off of what he said, if they take if they keep that pick, whether it's Scoot or anybody else, yeah. if they keep that pick, I think a serious conversation will be had about potentially parting ways. All right, who do you trade him to? I think if he is traded, it'll be in the Eastern Conference. I mean, Dame went on went on record, and I, I, know. You know, I, I, I spoke to him yesterday. I said, "Hey, you could you couldn't save that for your boy? Like you you couldn't save that for your boy? He, he could have given said, you a scoop there." Yeah, no, he said the way he told me yesterday, he was like they put him on a spot where they said they eliminated other teams. He said, so he said that clip was not being played. They actually eliminated, or you can't say this team, you can't say this team, but between these three or four teams, <laughs> which teams make sense? He said, so that's how he answered it. And he said that part was actually Oh, cut he up. doesn't fold under pressure. <laughs> not, not on the court. Now all of a sudden they're saying, all right, you got to choose between these teams. Um, right, okay, yeah. he could say, I'm with the Blazers. I'm with right. the Blazers. He could have, but... 
I think I think that sheds light. I, I could see the Nets. I, I, I could because he could be yeah. the star there. Although, I mean, I don't know how that front office is, the ownership. It's dysfunctional, but by comparison to the Knicks, you know, we're always talking about the Knicks being dysfunctional. I know Miami Heat, he, you know, he's friends with Bam Adebayo, but I, where, let's say I'll make you GM. Where are you sending him to if you have to? If I have to, I would think if it gets to that point, they would consult with Dane because, you know, Dane's been there 10 years, been a model citizen, represented that city and that organization with class all throughout. I think they will try to get him where he wants to go in the East. That is, I do not see an envision and uh, I do not envision a possibility that he, he would be traded to a Western Conference team. What, so what if we did this, he, though, Chris? What okay. if I'm the Boston Celtics and I sign? No, no. He's not, he's not doing Boston. He's not, <laughs> he doesn't want any part of Boston. <laughs> not, uh, <laughs> okay. All right. I, I don't see that. Dude. Okay. So you, you can confidently report that, that Dame would not <laughs> want to go to Boston. Is that what you're saying? Okay. I think that's pretty safe to say. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I was thinking Jalen Brown and maybe something to uh, Portland, and then you get Dame Lillard. But, all right, Nets, Heat, anybody else that will be on that list, do you think that he would want to go to? And will he dictate where he wants to go, or does Portland dictate, if it comes to that? I think he will have a large part. I think they respect him enough for what he's done for that organization I to hope. send him yeah. to place. Yeah, okay. that he would. But Knicks, he, I mean, he mentioned it. He mentioned it on there. Nets, Miami. And possibly, I don't think, poss- po- I don't know, <laughs> Philly, but they, they don't have what it takes. So I, I'll leave it at the Nets in Miami. All right. Uh, how many games does this series go? You know what, DP? <laughs> I was hoping to see a really good series. Um, Denver Nuggets are just too talented. It, it, it takes an awful lot for the Miami Heat to, to stream to get a win. They play with talent wise. They just they, they're just not on par with the Nuggets. But they play so hard and they stay in it. They're well coached. I wouldn't be surprised if the Nuggets close it out in five. Whoa, okay, gentlemen sweep there. All right, All right. Nah, I, I wouldn't be surprised. All right, hey, great to talk to you as always. Anytime, DP. Thank Take you, care. thank you. That's uh, Chris Haynes, uh, TNT sideline reporter, Bleacher Report, NBA Insider, and you know he's always on the phone. Probably on the phone to Chris Paul this morning. Probably on the phone with Dame Lillard later on today. I like that. 